from the rhythm and timing of Muay Thai. But he just means like your flow and like you're kind of dancing around. But look at his shoulders, his hips, his knees. He's so fast. So he liked that I was moving my feet with my one two. I wasn't stepping on my jab the way that he does. But see how he does like a little twist and then his turn on the cross? He's so fluid. He plays on the bag a little bit later. Um, I'll geek out on that because it was just so beautiful. But uh, his eyes, like he doesn't throw with power. His power comes from his accuracy and his speed. He sees everything. So he's saying to bring your heel up just a little bit. So you kind of like um, sprinter foot your back leg a little bit. Look at his pivots in his ankles and the bend in his knees all the time, but his hips kind of stay neutral. And then his shoulders are very loose. Saita means like to watch your opponent. So he's got his chin tucked, but he's always like watching. So I'm saying when you fought, where did you look? And he says, you want to be able to see the whole picture. But he basically looks along the shoulder line, like across the shoulders. He says if you watch the shoulders, you can see where someone's going. Oh, he's very fast. He says he's like a viper with his jab. He likes to just be very quick with it. Uh, when we actually got to sparring, I felt what he meant by that. It comes out of nowhere. Movement is just continuous. So he wants this little slip. I did this uh, in sparring with Yoshin Pan the next day. It works brilliantly for Muay Thai, this little like slip over because you're barely moving to the side. Um, you don't have to use a lot of footwork. You don't have to get out of the way or actually change your distance at all. It's just a little slip rotation to the side. He wanted on this cross to kind of be like meeting the opponent at the same time they're coming towards you. It's a bit of a chon, which you get a lot of in Muay Thai. Um, it's subtle because it's just a cross and he's not he's not like racing towards me, but his weight is coming towards me and he wants this like chon of the right hand. Look at where he puts his head when he's punching the body. Look at his head. And then he does this little step back after he comes off of the body punch because he needs longer range for the punches that come after it. Knows where he is all the time. Like it, you don't have to make big differences. There's a difference in like the hit position a little bit, but you can kind of go back and forth between them. If you're going to be working on boxing for Muay Thai and doing things like this, just start like thinking and feeling to yourself where knees and kicks would come out of this. Someone who um, stitches them together in a really beautiful way is Samson Hassan. He's in the Muay Thai library twice. You can go look at both of his sessions. But his boxing is boxing. Um, and then he just knees and kicks out of it. It's <laughs> incredible. Um, Samran Sok, also incredible boxer. Um, he did not do a lot of kicking, but he had this long right that came out of his punches um, that you can see in his session as well. He takes a little step back before his right to like create that chon and to like set up the power on that right cross. Comes from his back foot. Body dig that he's having me do right here is very similar to the way that Sagat teaches it, the like tiger uppercut. It, it's like a piston, how it just comes straight back and boom. I think of it as being kind of like a, um, when you're playing, uh, oh god, what is it called? I can't remember the game it's called. It's on a table and you like pull the ball, pinball. <laughs> it's like a pinball thing. Uh, it like comes back and launches it forward. You pull the pin back and then it goes. That's what that body punch is like. I, my head was coming too far over, so I'm kind of asking him about it. His head actually comes forward and kind of tucks into a blind spot. <laughs> My head's not coming forward. My head is like staying where it is and so I kind of have to like reach. He just leans his head into a blind spot of the opponent and so he has a really good distance for that uh, body dig. Yeah, because the cadence is the same, even if the words change. Look how close. He like brings his head, his face is like right in front of my face. It's too short 
for me to hit him, but he's at the perfect distance to uh, be hitting me from both sides. Oh. He wants a little bit more of that yolk, yolk, like side to side, but just those little steps back. He's actually taking um, bigger steps away from me, creating bigger distance between us. I think he's doing that to give me breaks um, between things, but I should be following him. Like he's kind of inviting me to follow him because with his style, he would be closing that distance and the opponent would not be able to breathe. So you, don't, you don't need a really wide hook. The hook actually comes right from your ribs. But like I was saying with his foot to watch his leg, the power comes from his front leg. See, I was going right behind my guard with that hook. Look, I means um, breathe, like practice your breathing as well. You should not be like getting exhausted on the back. If you're getting exhausted, it's because you're not breathing. Look at how even everything is that he does. There is power in what he's doing, but he's not like throwing with power. He's not saving up for like a power shot. It's just it'll come out. Ugh. So I'm like, you don't just stand in one spot. You want to be like moving your feet. He's like, yeah, you need to change angles. Get correction. So I just threw a hook there. Get correction though. And he's gonna tell me that the hook doesn't come out of that rhythm. He's like the jump lot for the right hook is not standing in front of the bag. You have to pivot out first. You tear out means like uh, it lies within us. What he means is like it's up to you what movements you do. It's not a memorized or choreographed thing. You can be wrong. This is the thing is you can like throw the wrong thing because it's all up to you. So if you're new to this and you're like, it can't be up to me because I don't know what to do. It's good that you don't know what to do. Just keep moving and your body will find where those rhythms are for you. So like that hook that I was throwing that he's like, that's not in your rhythm. I was breaking my own rhythm, but I couldn't feel it. So when he showed me to step off first, I'm like, totally, that's how that flows. So that right hook doesn't have the right jung He said, use your right to protect your body. Then when you pivot out to the right, you're protected so you can throw that. So keep your right up to protect yourself. In, out. Step in for the hook. Ah! When he goes under, his head like ducks under that little, um, 